This video is picking up pretty much where the last one left off. I'm still in part 040, input and output, and we're going to look at two functions in MATLAB, write table and write matrix. I'm going to do a separate video for octave because octave is going to have different functions that will do similar things, but these functions I don't believe work in octave. So I'm going to run this section right here. It's got the same code as from the previous section, but what matters, scrolling down a little bit, is the write table functions right here. Up top, I'm creating my table. I'm putting it at a variable named t, but down here, I'm going to write the data from that table t out into two different files. In the first example here, I'm just showing that if you specify a file name but don't give it a file extension, the default output type is going to be a text file, txt. But you can also just output it directly to an Excel spreadsheet file, .xlsx, for example, and that will work too. So this is the current contents of the folder that MATLAB is focused on, our current folder right here. There are four files in it. And then when I run this section, control enter, there are going to be two additional files in it. I find it useful to display something like finished after running this code because writing data out to a file can be more time consuming than some of the operations that we might be more familiar with. All right, so the code did run. And here's what my folder looks like now. There are two additional files. There's myplanetdata.txt and myplanetdata.xlsx. The text file I will open up with a notepad. And it's just simply the values that were in my table separated by commas. There are going to be extra spaces inserted in because the char function inserts extra spaces to make sure that all our text data is the same length. So that may occur. Now, unfortunately, on the computer that I'm on, I actually don't have Microsoft Office, but you'll just have to trust me or verify it for yourself that myplanetdata.xlsx does open and work perfectly in Microsoft Excel. And you can obviously also do like CSV file extensions because this text file literally is a CSV file. And that'll open in a variety of different spreadsheet programs. And the function itself is simple. It's just write table, parentheses, your variable containing the table information, my variable's named t, and then comma, and then the file name in single quotes. All right, going on down. You can even specify where you want to put the data. So in this section, I'll run it here. I'm not going to be able to show the result, but basically I just tell write table to write the data from my t variable to this file name. I can use a variable for that if I wish, or I can just type in the title itself, whichever I prefer. And then I can say I want it on sheet one. I want the upper left corner of my data to start in cell B1. Note that this will append to the existing file. It will not delete the previous data. It will add to it. So when I put this new data, or a copy of the old data rather, into column B, row one, column A is still going to have Earth, Moon, and Mars. And column B is also going to have Earth, Moon, and Mars beneath a planet header. And then column C is going to be this right here. And then column D is going to be this right here. You can even insert into a new sheet, so sheet two. Sheet two doesn't exist yet, but I run this code. It will give me a little warning that's saying that it's adding the requested sheet, sheet number two, but that works perfectly fine. And I even put it just kind of in the middle of the page at location G6. Again, I apologize for not having Microsoft Office on this computer, but uh, you can test it out for yourself. Matrices can also be written out to file. Now I'm going to pretty much ignore this code right here. It does a calculation from uh, the textbook MATLAB for Engineers 5th edition. One of the problems in that has to do with the stress and strain on a material and they test the material under different loads and see how much it deforms, what is the length of the material before and after the uh, pressure that's put on it. And then you can display out your data in a table. So let's just go ahead and run this. And I actually didn't even display it out because I wrote the data straight to file. So I used write matrix, different from write table, and I wrote out to a file named material data, default extension will be txt, and then I also wrote out to material data.xlsx. And if we go to that folder again, we can see that the additional files material data and material data.xlsx have been created. If I open up material data in notepad, we see it as comma separated values. The values themselves have all the accuracy that MATLAB can muster, so there will be a lot of decimal places, we are probably seeing some rounding errors here. Like I'm looking at this one right here where it's a bunch of zeros with a one right at the end. That happens. Computers do not have infinite capacity to represent numbers or anything. And so there has to be rounding at some point. So we may see artifacts like that show up in our data. So what we're seeing here is 
earlier, there were functions read matrix, read table, read cell to read data in from file. And what we're seeing here is that there is also sort of the inverse of those functions. We have write table, we have write matrix. I believe there is also a write cell, although I don't have a demo set up for that. And there it is, there's the help information on write cell. It also exists. And they're all relatively handy and easy to use. These commands right here for inserting into a particular location in the Excel spreadsheet will also work not just on write table, but also on write matrix. And that's all for this video.